on their own land. When my family was living in a refugee camp, simply having a Palestinian flag and their makeshift problem was a crime resulting in your arrest. Any representation of Palestine's existence was considered an act of deviance. Our voices have been silenced since the start of our colonization. With the recent events happening, I've been doing everything I can to share the events that are happening in Palestine right now. I've spoken out on the colonization of Sheikh Jarrah, land granted to Palestinians by the United Nations that is illegally occupied by Israel. I've spoken out on how Palestinians protesting the colonization of their homes have been shot at with rubberized metal bullets, stun grenades, and stung water. I've spoken out about how Israel illegally controls Palestinians' access to their mosque in Aqsa. I've spoken out about how Palestinians were shot at while praying during Ramadan, while shopping for Eid holiday. I'm tired of having to speak out about the crimes my people face. Every post I share to raise awareness for what is happening physically hurts me. It hurts to see my people being ethically cleansed and ignored. It hurts to know that the U.S. and Cornell are complicit in these crimes. We need change now. social media where events can be shared and spread immediately. With advances in technology, it's getting harder and harder for colonizers to control the narrative and hide the oppression of my people. <laughs> my people don't have to suffer in silence anymore. We can stop the persecution, colonization, ethnic cleansing and illegal occupation of Palestinians. This is why it's so important for everyone to do their part, to raise awareness for the Palestinian fight for freedom. Don't let my voice be dragged out by settler propaganda and false advertisement. Do your part. Talk about the illegal occupation of Palestine with your family and friends. Share information on what is happening to my people, my family. Be present when we demand justice for Palestinians. Thank you. Palestine expanded my education on Israel and Zionism. 
dozen years. And one of the main reasons I joined PSL, the Party for Socialism and Liberation, was because of its decades-long, solid, unequivocal, and ardent support for Palestinian freedom, with PSL founders and leaders having been in the forefront for decades of this movement, and for the way PSL integrates the movement for Palestinian freedom into the larger project of hope and struggle for a much more humane and just society here, there, and internationally. I want, I want to begin to honor
about, as they always have done in U.S. history, through ongoing mass protests and campaigns that brought many different social justice movements together and spread throughout the country. Persistent showing up in the streets despite arrests and brutal repression, along with the embarrassing exposure here and internationally of U.S. racism, violence, and the vulnerability and contradiction of our capital system, we have people, ordinarily ordinary people from all ages and backgrounds who brought about the change. And of course, Donald Trump and COVID-19 swiftly lifted off the nail. Viral videos of the past few weeks have certainly made a difference in what people know about our quote, special friend, unquote, is the discourse regarding Israel has been changing over the past several years. Even corporate mainstream media is publishing pieces by people that would not have been published just a few years ago. BDS campaign has galvanized many people and introduced others to some awareness of the situation. But we remain up against 73 years of the most successful political PR campaigns in Iraq in human history. About that land without the people that I mentioned, has there ever been a past or a No one believes it, but it still works. People act as if it's true. We stand with Israel because of the Holocaust, and we care about Jews. Do we really? Some U.S. government officials and industrialists supported the Nazis during World War II, and the U.S. refused thousands of Jewish refugees from Europe during the war, and even rejected military intervention when and where it would have mattered. Then we hear we unconditionally support Israel because it's the only democracy in the Middle East. Well, now we know, because apartheid was announced officially in Israel last year. But things are changing. Although the official U.S. verbal defense of Israel's recent atrocities continues the past, it's no longer passionate and extensive, not even attempting to convince. It is brief, expressionless, robotic. It's reduced to just that one sentence repeated over and over until it, it's ringing meaningless now. The mantra, Israel has the right to defend itself. And even Biden saying that Israel did not overreact, that was also robotic, unconvincingly delivered. As we mobilize in huge, in huge numbers and regularly, and not wait for the next catastrophic Israeli action, or even the next Nakba day, we must go where our presence will make a difference. And I'm always thinking of that damn Technion. And we have the yeah. And we've got to counter that false and normalizing narrative. But we must do it consistently, creatively, and persistently. We must find the most effective language and activities that reach people. We can fill in the enormous tragic 
days ago, Ramadan, the holy month for Muslims just ended. Palestinians have not been able to celebrate Ramadan the entire month to practice their religion and strengthen their worship in peace. Every day of this holy month is a struggle. Every day is lived in fear, and every day is lived by things to last. I saw a post on Instagram once of a woman whose mother called him one day from Gaza. When he picked up the phone, he noticed she was talking like it was her last day. The woman called her son to say her goodbye, yearning to hear his voice just one last time, just in case something were to happen to her. Imagine a life where you constantly live in fear on the soil of your homeland. Imagine not knowing when you will wake up in the only place you've ever called home. Imagine not knowing if you will ever see your son again. Imen Becher tweeted one night, Tonight I put the kids to sleep in our bedroom so that when we die, we die together and no one would live to mourn the loss of one another. A Palestinian doctor was treating patients who got injured during bombing and attack. He got a ton of bleeding civilians that are in bad conditions and after a short amount of time, he came to realize that two of the injured people were his own children. As an end that arrived, Palestinians were encouraged and forced to find the slightest amount of joy in their holiday. Some celebrated without the presence of family members and others celebrated with the thought of, is my family back home safe? Constantly crossing their mind. Their joy is their only form of resistance. Many people will say, I don't want to choose sides or get involved in politics. This fight isn't about choosing sides. This is a fight for humanity. Siding with Palestine is siding with humanity, just like siding with the Black Lives Matter movement is siding with humanity. It is a humanitarian Israeli apartheid to ethnically clean Palestine. When you, you when you choose to finally see what's going on and recognize the everyday cleansing, ethnic cleansing of Palestine, you will then start to normalize death innocent Palestinians. Stop saying both sides are wrong or this is happening on both sides because there are no both sides to genocide and ethnic cleansing. <laughs> The U.S. funds Israel's military. Every year, $3 billion, $800 million of our taxes are being used and shifted to the Israel military. Instead of using it for things to benefit ourselves, it's being used to support ethnic cleansing. As of yesterday, 119 people were killed, 31 children, 19 women, and more than 830 people are wounded. We are witnessing a genocide. Today commemorates the 72 years of the dispossession of Palestinian refugees, ethnic cleansing, of, and theft of land. More than 500 villages were ethnically cleansed, but this didn't end back in 1948. As of today, Palestinians are still being thrown out of their homes, waiting for their right of return. Every voice is a voice that matters. The voice of each and every one of you is the beginning of a ripple effect that will lead, to the, that will, that will lead others to the truth of what is really happening. Do not underestimate your impact. Many people are silent. Why? Because genocide hasn't come knocking down their doors. Empathy is, this, empathy is the medicine this world needs. Continue to educate yourself and use your voice because what is happening is an everyday struggle. If it was their land, they wouldn't want to see it burn.
know about Taylor Stoney with us here. Let's not forget that we're all standing on Stoney Lane. Right. This parallel, it was our leaders who saw it. It was Angela Davis who said the struggle of the Palestinian people is intertwined with struggle against racism all around the world. As Hedge Malik, Malcolm X, back in the 60s, was calling out this injustice. And I feel like we should remember what he said about the media that we see in our TV screens. We shouldn't let people try to fool us into thinking that the occupation is some unique kind of conflict disconnected from other systems of oppression. I know black folks can recognize oppression when they see it. And you see it in Occupy Palestine. I know my Muslim brothers and sisters who grew up here post 9 11 who recognize discrimination in the way that media weaves narratives and demonizes us. And you see that in Occupy Palestine. So remember what Malcolm said. If you're not careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are oppressed and loving the people who are doing their oppression. I know I see a lot of familiar faces here and some new ones too, and I don't know how many of you are around. Two years ago, when a very dedicated group of organizers, some from SAP, some from Mecca, but many from a coalition of groups representing the disenfranchised and marginalized groups on Cornell's campus came together and unified trying to pass the bill getting the university to the best the companies propping up the occupation. And I bring this up not to remind you of a time where we struggled or we were defeated. I want to remind you not to let anyone convince you that we're here in Ithaca, that we're too far removed from the occupation, that we just don't understand, that our actions here on this campus and the city don't have a real impact. What we do here, what we fight for here, the solidarity that we show here matters to our Palestinian family here on this campus and around the world. Ties like this often turn slowly, but they turn around the less. So we're freeing Palestine and Palestine is free from the river peace here. And lastly, I would ask to recite a dua, a short prayer for the Muslims in Palestine. I'm so glad I'm in Arabic first and in English.